In this tutorial, what we're going to do is take a look at writing some code to control the micro bit. So what we're going to try and do as well is learn a little bit about something called variables. So what I've got here first of all then is a nice close-up of a micro bit and we've got a graphic on here and you can see the LED display that we've got. Before we go any further, we need to be very, very clear on understanding which LEDs what. And to do that, it's uh, very, very simple. It's an awful lot like you do if you talk about graphs in a maths lesson. So what you've got is you've got the origin of your, uh, your axis for your imaginary graph just here. You've got the x-axis, which then goes along, and you've got the y-axis, which comes down the way. So this LED just here uh, starts at the origin of your graph, so that's at 0, 0, so x and y are both 0, uh, and this LED here would be 1, 0, because it's 1 across and none down, and that would be 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, and if I started coming down, it'd be 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, so that way I've got a way of describing every single individual LED on the micro bit. So that's our first point. So let's start off then by writing a little bit of code and we'll see if we can introduce variables to make it work a little bit better. So if you're on the Lawn to Code notes, just like I am, you'll be able to scroll down the way a little bit and you'll see the first set of code that I've written just here. So I'm going to pick that up by highlighting it and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go copy. And I'm going to load up Mew that hopefully you've loaded up from your desktop. You should have a link to that and you'll know you've found the right app because it looks a little bit like this. Uh, what I've also done as well, just to get in in advance, is I've already plugged in my BBC micro bit. That's plugged in right now. And the, to test that that's working properly and it's connected up, the back of the micro bit should have a, a yellow LED light on it. And your micro bit itself will probably have some sort of um, swirly text or something on it if it's just fired up for the first time. But it might not. So let's just make sure everything's all set nicely. I'm going to click on this button here that says REPL. That's short for uh, Read, Evaluate, uh, Print Loop, I think that is. But basically it allows us to see any error messages from our code uh, as they're reported coming straight back from the micro bit. So we're going to need that there. And I can see here at the moment that this has just got some feedback that it's giving me here. There you go. And that's connected up to the micro bit like that. Back to the code window then. What I'm going to do is highlight and delete all the stuff out of here. So I don't want any of that. And I'm going to paste my code in, keyboard shortcut, control and V, or I could have right clicked and gone to paste. That would have done it as well. It's faster if you get used to using the keyboard. Let's take a look at the code we've got here then. So whenever you write anything with your micro bit, the first line is always, always, always going to be this. And it's just asking MicroPython to pick up some extra instructions uh, for what's called a library of code. Uh, and that's just going to make it so everything can work. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't be able to use the buttons and the LEDs. The next bit is the first example of us using a variable. And a variable is something that you can store, that you can change. You'll have seen this in things like maths lessons before. Uh, and in maths, the variable names you tend to use tend to be x. You know, and you say things like x equals 5, and I can say that y equals 6. You see that quite a lot in maths. When you're coding, you tend to use words instead and that's why I've used this little phrase here how bright and so that I can see where the word how stops and where the word bright starts I've used a capital letter as well to break it up so it makes it a bit more human readable um, when you do do variable names a little point to remember as well you can't put spaces in them like this the computer won't let you do that so it always 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 going to be one word some people use underscores like that to break their variable names up you could do that if you wanted it's just personal preference I tend to do it like this so what I've done is I've said that from now on whenever we ask about this how bright variable that's worth the number nine moving on let's look at the next bit what I've then done is I've started something called a loop and again there's a few different concepts you're going to bump into as we go along and the best thing for now is just to go with it and we'll explain a bit more about what this means down the line but the really really short version is that I'm saying that the computer is going to start doing some instructions over and over and over again and it's going to do it forever until I unplug the micro bit and what I do to tell it which instructions I want it to repeat you'll notice that all the instructions that have come after that all moved in a little bit on the page can you see that that's called an indent uh, or tabbed in some people say instead to do that to get that indented text I'm just going to knock that indent off to get that indented text, what you can do is if you look on your keyboard just above the caps lock key, you've got another key there, it's the tab key, and that automatically puts exactly the number of spaces that you need in place for you. So what the computer's seeing here is I'm saying that uh, I would like to continually do this instruction, then this one, then this one, 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 that one. And as soon as it's done that instruction, what then happens 
is the code, jumps back to the top again, and it runs straight back through these lines of code. As soon as it hits the bottom, it comes back down. So it's gonna do that and do that and do that. So when we're making things like patterns, that's really, really quite nice and convenient. So let's take a look at what we're gonna do and what the actual things that we're repeating are. Well, one of the command words that you can use is this idea of set pixel that I've got here. So I'm saying to Python that on the display, I would like to set a particular pixel to a certain level of brightness. And what we then do is you give it the coordinates of the pixel, of the, of the LED effectively, that I want to turn on. So, come back to our diagram. I've said here uh, I want it on the X position, I want it to be on position zero, and on Y, I want it to be position zero. So let's look at that LED, um, that diagram we had before. So number zero, there it is. So number zero, zero, it's this LED here. So I'm asking Python to turn on that LED. And uh, I'm telling it then, finally, how bright to make it. You can give an LED in MicroPython a number from zero up to nine. Zero means turn it off, uh, and nine means turn it up to maximum brightness. And the amount of brightness I've asked for is how bright. Now, you remember that? That's the variable we set up before. So that's basically gonna be nine. So what I could have done here is I could actually have just written the number nine Instead, I could have written that, and I could have written nine here, and nine here, and nine here, and nine here. But I didn't, and I wonder why that would be. Well, the answer is this. Let's imagine that I put that program, and we haven't even looked at the lines yet, but let's imagine that I put the program onto the micro bit, and I ran it and said, oh, that, that, that's a little bit too bright, that's very intense, I'd like to make it a little bit less bright. So what I could do, if I'd written nine, 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 what I could do is I could then go back and put eight, 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 and then I could say, oh, it's a little bit too bright, and come back and go seven, 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 seven. and you, you get the idea here. But because I used a variable and I set it up once, I could then change this here to seven or six or whatever number I wanted, and then that will automatically be used every single time just here. It's quite clever, isn't it? So it's actually saving me a lot of time in the long run by using a variable. Anything that you see that's got a number on it, uh, and often as you'll discover later on some text, you can replace with variables, and there's often good reasons to do that. So our first line, going back to where we came in then, was to say that we're gonna set the first pixel, pixel zero, zero, to be turned all the way on to maximum brightness. What's the next line? So the next line says sleep 500. Um, you've got to remember with a computer or with a micro bit, which is a little microcontroller that we've got there, with things like that, um, what they're gonna do is they can carry out instructions incredibly, incredibly quickly. So if I didn't uh, tell the computer to slow things down for the human being who's actually watching it do stuff, if I didn't tell them to do that, then this set of lights would be turned on so fast that it would just look as if they all got turned on simultaneously uh, constantly, it wouldn't look like anything. So to make it so a human being can actually see something happen, I use this sleep command. And I'm saying I'd like you to pause for 500 milliseconds. There's a thousand milliseconds in one second, so this is half a second. So I'm saying, first of all, turn on the first LED, wait half a second, turn on another LED. Which one's that, do you think? Which LED do you think that is? Well, that's gonna be uh, X equals one. So that's the next LED to the right of the last one. Wait half a second, turn on the next one, so all these others are still turned on. Uh, then wait, turn on the next one, wait, turn on the last one, so that's the rightmost column, the top rightmost LED now, turn that on, uh, and then wait half a second. What I'm then doing finally is I'm asking it then to clear the entire display. As soon as it's cleared the display, it then jumps up, and a fraction of a second later, a thousandth of a second later, it'll be turning on the first LED again and repeating that sequence. So we'll see a sort of um, a series of LEDs going on and it goes back to one LED and they keep going on. So we could do that and, and we can test that right now by clicking on flash just here. That's going to put the program onto my micro bit. I'm looking down at my micro bit now, the orange LED on the back is flashing away and it shouldn't take too long before you get a message on the screen. There it is, saying that that's been flashed to the micro bit like so. And as I look at my micro bit, and you know, hopefully you'll be able to look at yours, uh, you'll see the LEDs steadily counting away. So a little point uh, now, this isn't on the web page, but something for you to think about is I wonder if you could think of a way to make this happen a bit faster. Maybe we could use another variable. And again, the liberating thing about coding is you can always write programs to do uh, and, and you know, to do whatever you want and to have the flexibility to change them around. So I could have a new variable, I could call it sleepy time. I'm gonna do this right now. 
and I could say that sleepy time is worth 250. And this is a new variable that now exists from this point forward. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that, keyboard shortcut, control C. And I'm going to come into all these sleeps that I've got, and I'm going to replace them all with sleepy time. So what do you think this is doing? Before you, um, you know, as, you, as you're learning to code, a good piece of advice is to always try and predict what you think it's going to do before you click on play to run the program. And at the moment, sleepy time's 250, and it was 500 before, and I flash this onto the micro bit, I wonder what that's going to look like. I wonder what the experience is going to be. And the nice thing is, in future, if I wanted to make it a bit faster, I can just change it once here now, uh, and it's automatically going to be different all the way through, isn't it? So that's the first part of what we're trying to do, and that just what gets us writing some simple code. So let's go back to the notes and take a look at the next step. Now, one of the things that occurred to me as I sat and wrote my first ever program is that it only currently uses the very top row of the LEDs. And what would look much, much nicer is if it actually used um, if it used all of the LED rows instead, so that, that way I was using you know nice big horizontal columns of LEDs. I get a really really nice effect that way. I wonder what the code would need to look like in order to do that, um, or indeed you know what if um, I wanted to make the, the the LEDs start on the right hand side and light up over to the left. My code at the moment is not very flexible. I'd need to start coming in here and saying if I wanted the entire column of LEDs to light up, I'd need to duplicate this line of code. And I'd need to do a bit of paste under here, so that's X, Y, so I'd need that to be on 1, wouldn't I, if I wanted to do that. And I'd need another line here, and that would need to be 2. And another line here, that would need to be 3. And this is just one column we're talking about, isn't it? I'd need another one in a second for 4. Then I'd need to come back under here and do the same thing again. And under here, and the same thing again, and here, and here. That's going to be a lot of lines of code, isn't it? We're talking 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. I've got another 20 lines of code I'm adding to my program. So it's not very, it's not very efficient. It doesn't scale up very well. So what I want to do instead is to use a different technique. And uh, it's a little bit like this one here. But let's take a look for now and see what we've got. So I'm going to come in here and delete all this code. And I'm going to go back to the notes and replace it with this code just here. Again, keyboard shortcut, control C to copy, and control V to paste in. Okay, so let's look at the code that we've got here this time. Uh, what have we got? We've got two variables now. I've got one called X, so I'm setting up the uh, presumably the X position later on. Again, you can call that potato if you want it, but people tend to prefer to use sensible names when they're writing variables. Uh, so I've got X just here, and how bright, which we recognize from before. So these two, this, this idea I hope is familiar to us. I've then got while true, so again we've seen that before. So these instructions here, including this is new, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but these instructions down to here, these are the ones that are gonna be repeated over and over and over again. So these happen once uh, and these happen repeatedly. Let's take a quick skim through. So we've got set pixel, we've seen that before. So what are we saying here, let's have a look. So if I run, if I was to run this line again out loud right now, I'm gonna turn on the pixel locator X on the X axis, um, that's zero. So that's LED number zero, I'll just do that temporarily. LED zero, zero, to be turned on to how bright, how bright is nine, so to be turned on to full power. That's what I'm asking that one line to do. Okay, what's the next line say? This one says X plus equals one. Well, what this actually is doing is it's saying to the computer, it's saying to the microcontroller, that what I want you to do is to take whatever X is worth right now, and I would like you to add one to it. That's what it's saying. So I'd like to say that x is going to become x but one more. So x at the moment is zero. A zero plus one is one. So x from this point forward, x is now worth one. Okay. Next thing we're doing is we're saying that we'd like to sleep for 250 milliseconds. So we're going to have a little pause. Okay. Let's have a look at the next line and see if we can guess what this says. You may recognize this from scratch. Uh, what this says is, is it says that if the value of x is exactly the same as the number five, then we're gonna do whatever instructions are indented, tabbed in, just like here, uh, the tabbed in from this point on. 
Okay, so uh, x currently is worth 1, we said, we just added to it, didn't we? x is worth 1, so we don't need to do these instructions. So that's the end of our while loop, so we're coming back up to the top. And now we're going to get the display, and we're going to turn on pixel uh, x0. x is worth 1 this time, isn't it, because we increased it. So we're going to turn on the next LED along to full power. Then we're going to add 1 to x again. So x is now worth uh, 2. And then we're going to pause a little bit. Is 2 the same as 5? No, it's not. Okay, back up to the top. So we're now going to turn on the uh, LED 2, 0. So that's the third one along, isn't it? it was 0, it's 1, it's 2. Third one along. We're going to add 1 to x again. x is now worth 3. And we pause. 3 isn't 5. We're going to turn on the next one. That's 4. Um, and then we're going to do the next. And we are now, all of a sudden, after we've done 4, after we've done 4 and we add one more to it, x is now worth 5. So let's look at what happens. If x is worth 5, then clear the display, so that turns off all the LEDs, and make x worth 0 again. And then the program comes back up, so we've got a clear screen. I'm now turning on the first LED again, and the process repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. And, and that really is, is how this works, and that's how loops are really powerful, and that's how variables are really powerful. So what can we do now we've got this? Let's see what the notes are asking us to do next. Uh, so the, uh, the next thing for you to do then is to perhaps consider the silver badge, which is to make a program that makes it work vertically rather than horizontally. Before we do that, let me give you one more clue, or maybe you feel confident that you could uh, make it work going down the y-axis rather than on the x-axis instead. Maybe you could do something. But I wonder what else we could do here. What else could we do? Well, I could change the sleep time. It only appears in one place now, and that's a lot more convenient, so that's quite nice. I could change this number to 4 or to 3. What, do you th what effect do you think that might have, I wonder, of doing that? Or different question, what if I change that number there to something like uh, a 2 instead? I wonder what effect that would have. Well, if you're learning to code, it's a really good idea, if you can't think what the answer to those are, to try those different things, put them on your micro bit, and look and see what it actually does and then try and understand why it did it. If you get it wrong, nothing bad's going to happen, the microbit won't catch fire, the computer won't explode or anything dramatic. You might get an error message, that might appear down here, but you can always go back, pick up a fresh copy of the code, and try it again until it does work. So have a little play with it, see how you get on, and see if you can do the badge tasks. And I'll see you in the next lesson.